So we're going to reinterpret her as a, as a, as a motorcycle. And we have, um, we've got Dinobot from the Springer mode. And here we've got Rat Trap. Oops, uh, this, is, this is just a, a lithograph we did of, of sort of all of the, uh, a lot of the characters from the, the main stories. And uh, Galvatron, in Japan there was a show called Beast Wars Second, and Galvatron was the main villain. And uh, this, was, um, this was built out of the Prime, Optimus Prime toy. Well, fancy seeing you back in my collection. Just to recap, Scorponok, Quick Strike, and the original Tarantulas were three toys from childhood that I broke a long, long time ago. I've since reacquired all three. This one I picked up fairly cheap at TF Nation, but at a figurative price. I'm not sure what Scorpion toys were like back then, but this has to be one of the best for its time. A little trend I've noticed with the arthropods is that they feel huge for their respective size class. Between the beefy claws and powerful looking tail, Scorponok could take on Megs himself. The colour scheme, while not entirely show accurate, I still like, and the texture slash detailing is pretty good too. I wouldn't expect any different from the line. I say this has to be one of the best Scorpion toys, as not only can the tail lean forward to effectively strike his prey, but with this lever, it can also lash out for long range attacks. At the tip is a really nice fade effect. I think we can guess what the red is, and I just realized Beast Wars got away with a lot. Other points of articulation are the claws and the rest of the pedipulps, though each set of legs is a solid piece. I'll talk more on the claws later, but the clip that holds one of them together is damaged. Now I know some of you will say that I shouldn't review broken or incomplete toys. My response? Try finding this guy in any condition for under 40 quid. To say nothing of his convention exclusive repaints. I gotta say, Beast Wars Scorponok has one of the most dynamic robot modes of any pre-transmetal Predacon. The claws are still impressive, and the way the tail towers over the head, he just looks like a genuine threat. And yet on the show they kinda threw him to the wayside. Surprisingly, neither of those aforementioned traits affect the balance of this toy, mainly because the feet and heel spurs are long, and in the latter's case, wide. As a result, posability is pretty decent, with at least 17 joints to work with. Since he's one of the earlier beast bots, he has a mutant head. Open it up to reveal his more show accurate face. The first wave of Beast Wars Megas were very gimmick heavy. Open this claw to fire two red missiles, which I don't have. I've been down that road before. Then there's the Cyber Bee, the counterpart to the Bat Scout. Well, I can't show you as the clip's broken. The idea is, pull the tab back to launch the bee, which in turn automorphs. The upper half of the claw splits to form wings. The ability to deploy a robotic animal drone is a great concept, kind of a spiritual successor to Soundwave shtick. And strangely enough, Scorponok pulls it off both better and worse than Polar Claw. Better in that no articulation is sacrificed. Worse in that... Well, I distinctly remember that the bee on my old copy had trouble staying in place, a problem that worsened with time. Whether it was because the spring was worn out, or some other reason, it got frustrating. And from what I've heard, I'm not the only one to have experienced this. If they were to ever generationize Beast War Scorponok, I hope that, amongst other things, they reimagine the Cyber Bee gimmick, as it's an otherwise great design for a very undeveloped character from my childhood series. Well, he got to be Sub-Commander, I suppose. I mean, it's not like they ever replaced him, right? 